Hello and welcome to Channels Book Club. My name is Olakunle Kasumo, and this is a show where we discuss all things books. We've got a new author who has a debut novel with a fascinating title, Heartbroken, Yet Unbroken. <laughs> I like that. Well, let's get to meet with her and enjoy the conversation reviewing this book that captured my imagination. Osarume Izerige is a healthcare worker and author. Born and bred in Nigeria, Izerige is the founder of Affectionate Hands Corporations, a licensed Canadian charity that is dedicated to helping Canadians and Nigerians in need. She's also the driving force behind Shield Family Homes, a licensed foster care agency committed to training and supporting foster parents. Izerige joins Channel's Book Club to discuss a novel, Heartbroken Yet Unbroken. Awesome. 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 Sister Awesome. Yes. Is that your friends call you? Yeah, that's what my friends call me. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you on Channel's Book Club. Oh, it's my pleasure being here. Good to have you here. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Tell me, you've been out of the country for over 30 years. Yes. How is it? What's life like um, being so Nigerian yet so foreign? <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria is a home. There is no place like home, we say. But when I left home about 30 years ago, that's, uh, I left home because uh, my dad, there was a man that was interested, wanted to take my hand in marriage. Didn't approach me, didn't propose to me for marriage. He just goes straight to my dad and approached my dad. So he offered drinks and cola no. It was a, a palm oil, a, a, a keg. We have a tradition back home. Mm -hmm. So he came with a palm oil and my dad accepted the gift. Dowry more or less. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so to my dad, he's, uh, it was a done deal. And uh, he gave you to him. Uh, so I didn't want that. I didn't want that for myself. So I, that was when I left the country and I went to Canada. What a story. And similar to the story of your protagonist in this book, right? Right. And, and that's why you said it is um, inspired by a true life, life story. story. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. So, wow. I mean, you hear the stories. You never know you'll get to meet people that actually experience it. <laughs> hmm. So, what is, how did your father, let me poke nose a little bit. How, okay. how, did, how did he react? Did he react in a similar way to... To the book? Yeah. Uh, not really, because to him, he already gave me away. And the man he gave me away to was a very powerful man who has a big pocket, I will say. Okay. So to him, that one will not stop on any lane to get what he wants. So that's when I left. Then no contact for a while. But eventually when I have contact with my family, it was, there was no hard feelings. So did you meet your own Esosa over there? <laughs> <laughs> because Amenze met Esosa. Yes, I <laughs> did meet my own Esosa. <laughs> wow, interesting story. And then, and then you gave your own Esosa for, for children. Yes. Now, one of your children is Amen, Amenze. Yes, right? right. And the protagonist of this book, mm -hmm. she has the same name. Is that, that's not a coincidence? Well, two different Ameza. My mom has uh, eight children. She lost two of her children, which wow. is the one that is older to me directly. She was named Ameza before she passed on to be with God. So that's why I put her, I just want to have her memory back. So I use her as a main character in the book. Okay, that's where the name came from. That's because, where the name came yeah, from. Because I noticed, um, I, I noticed the name, and yeah. I said, "Oh wow!" I, I, I was wondering <laughs> why, why you picked one of your four children. What happened to the other three? That's oh, jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I, I'm sure so that we're not just talking to ourselves. I'm sure viewers are wondering what are they talking about. Let's let's do an introduction. Um, can you summarize this book, this story, okay. just for the sake of viewers who are wondering? What is heart broken, yet unbroken? I like that title. What is it about? Okay. Heartbroken yet unbroken is a story surrounding Ameze. Ameze is a young girl who grew up raised by both 
biological mom and grandmother. grandmother. And uh, she was involved with life, surrounded with life of um, uh, love and heartbreak. And she found love when she left home in a big city, actually Lagos. Mm -hmm. So she was in love and there was somebody else involved in her life. But tragedy happened that took the love of her life. That broke her heart. That broke her heart. And that's the same tragedy that happened put her in a coma. She was in a coma for quite a while. She even lost the ability to even be able to walk. But then now, when she was now <laughs> being married off, mm -hmm. why she stayed paralyzed, not able to walk. But she, when she was able to get herself together. But now I'll say, Nigeria, in a con this country, is blessed with a lot of natural treatment that we have, which is very good. Mm. She did go through different treatment, why she was in the hospital and why she was not able to walk. But then with the natural treatment, she was able to get back on her feet. When she was able to get her back on her feet, she couldn't wait as far as her leg can carry her. Mm -hmm. That's when she left the, country, left the country and flee to Canada to take refuge. Mm. So while she was in Canada, she met the love of her life. She found love again. Esosa. Esosa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, every time she got broken down, she put her pieces together. together. She never gave up. But she didn't let the brokenness put her in one place. But she was always encouraged, putting herself together, keep going. And uh, she's a masterpiece. In her life, she was even now giving back to community around her. Mm. Well, this, how much of this is um, inspired by a true story? I mean, beyond um, the name and, you know, I mean, in your personal life, you left the country to Canada. And in, in this story, she left to Canada. Yeah. So how much of this is inspired by a true, true life story? I know your life is more or less dedicated to charity work. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I would like you to speak speak on the similarities okay <laughs> similarity amazing in the book when she lost the love of her life she was in the wheelchair she was in a coma for a while when she came out of the coma she couldn't walk which on the other side completely different myself i was not in a coma <laughs> different experience, different experience. But there is a similarity in the story. Mm. Yes. Okay. Interesting. So uh, this is your debut novel. This is your first novel. This is my first. first. And it's quite a sizable one. Uh, we're talking about of 300 and uh, four, five pages here. Yeah. There about. What was the experience like for you writing this? I mean, first experience writing a novel. Well, I would say just one day at a time. I never think this was going to be a book. I never think of it. I was writing a book or writing a novel. But my first thing was to put pencil down my experience in life or story that is similar to mine. So I was just putting it down one day at a time. Now, there's also a very, uh, and obviously, you know, strong faith angle to this story. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I, your personal life, I, I guess, must have, I mean, and also given, given the nature of your work, the kind yeah. of work you do and the kind of charities you run. I would like you to say, speak to that a little bit. Um, the kind of work you do and how that, you brought that to bear right, in terms of faith now in your novel. Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I... I grew up with my grandmother who don't even know God. Mm. She was the eyes of the gods in the village. Mm. You know what the eyes of the gods is? No, please enlighten me. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes of the god is somebody who the whole villager, you know, choose or their gods choose to be their eyes. So she would be the one to advocate between the gods and the villagers. Oh, she was like a middle person like, yes uh, yeah okay. and she always consults her gods but growing up now be, being with my mom in the city then you know my 
my faith change. Then even in Canada, I, I continue my faith. And uh, I have a place of fellowship. Like we go to, uh, I was going to salvation ministry at the time. And uh, I even remember coming to Five Nights of Glory in Port Harcourt for a program when Pastor David B. Oman invited Canada branch to come. So I was one of the four delegates that came to represent Canada. And uh, I know when I seek the face of God and I pray, God answer my prayer. I need to give you some prayer points. <laughs> I have some serious, serious issues to be dealt with. <laughs> Interesting. So you, you, you brought that faith angle to your um, that faith experience, mm -hmm. you want it to bear in your novel, yes. clearly, yes. From, from the story. Yeah. Okay, so now I, I want to ask you to, let's read together, okay? okay. Um, maybe some parts of chapter one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a little bit, mm -hmm. because we don't have so much time. All right. So some parts of chapter one, mm -hmm. um, I, and the purpose of this is I want you to, I would like you to sort of like share, give us a little bit of an insight into... You know how you write, and okay. you know your, your the style you have chosen to mm -hmm. adopt. Okay. Um, Amizé's grandfather from her mother's Mother side, side, Chief Ohanwa mm -hmm. of the Bini Kingdom, had the first child named Ereowa Edu. Traditionally, forbid him to give his title, his title to his daughter, because he was reserved for a male heir. You have to give it to your second child, who is a boy. They told him. They told him. Ah, uh, wow. And Chief Ohanwe, um, Erinwe, do I do it? Erinwe, yeah. Erinwe. He do. He do. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's, so, that's been it. That's been it, yes. Cannot become, become the, the chief, chief of, of this place, place because, because she's, she's a, a woman. woman. It is, it is not, not accepted, accepted even by, by tradition. tradition. We, are we are not, not going, going to accept her as, as the chief. chief. You have to, to give, give the title, title to, to your, your second child, child who happily to be, be a boy, boy and, and your first son. son the refuted. Yeah. Hmm. So what was going on here? Uh, What's going on here is uh, Amaze's grandfather. This is her mother. Amaze being the main protagonist of the Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amaze's grandfather had the first daughter and the first child. So tradition forbids her to be the chief of uh, that child is, a girl. is a girl, exactly. So, but he said no, that he wanted to give the title to the daughter. But then he just said the chief, chief men and the king's men to say, you know what? Give it a time, let's see what play mm -hmm. out. But what play out was the daughter grow up and the first time, even he was raising the daughter the same way he was raising his boys, mm -hmm. imparting her that she can do anything, anything. that the same thing boys can do. Mm -hmm. So. First time the daughter left home to visit a family person, just like maybe a couple of villages away. And the daughter got pregnant, mm. came home. But the man that was responsible for that pregnancy didn't want to be part of it. So, but Chief Ohanwan now said he was going to take the daughter in. But even the, the king's man now said, no, tradition forbids she has to be married. She's not supposed to get pregnant <laughs> outside wedlock. <laughs> So Chief Ohanwan take the daughter in, groom the daughter, the daughter put to bed and have a son. <laughs> so you want me to go ahead? I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Let, let's, all, let's all give up, give, give, oh, okay. tell the whole story. Okay, okay. I think mean, that's enough teaser. All right. But, uh, but I mean, it, it, it just provides insight into, it, the, the, your book is a mixture of, faith and religion, tradition, romance, um, and all sorts of everything. life experiences put together into a remarkable story. Thank well, you. Well, thank you very much. Thank um, you. Osas. Thank you for joining us on Channels Book Club. We, unfortunately, we don't have any more time. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I hope people can get this easily. I, I encourage everybody to have this in their hand. Is it out there? In, is it, is it gonna it's going to be, be in Amazon. Okay. But not right now, but I know it's going to be in Amazon in a month from now. And I hope we can find, find it in some bookshops in Nigeria. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you very much. Heartbroken. Yes. 
yet unbroken. unbroken. What a title. Thank you for joining us on Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It was nice meeting you, sir. Heartbroken yet unbroken. I just love that title. It's always nice when authors play with words to capture our imagination. That's a novel you need to get your hands on and read. Well, up next, the Nigeria Prize for Literature, the biggest literary prize in Africa. Ah, wow. 11 writers have been longlisted for the big prize. Usually after the long list, three are shortlisted and then one ticks away the big prize. I keep saying the big prize. What is it? 100,000 US dollars. Ah, that's massive. But it's not just a prize. The, the Nigeria Prize for Literature has grown in reputation, has grown in esteem. And it's such an honor for any writer to win that prize. It's not just the money. It, the doors the prize opens. I mean, it's just a stamp, a stamp of approval, of authority, of expertise on whoever wins that prize. Well, we were there when 11 of these long-listed writers were hosted by Cora and the NLNG at the annual book party prior to announcing the three shortlisted writers. Enjoy this. It's the 15th edition of the Committee of Relevant Arts, Cora Nigeria Prize for Literature, NPL Book Party. This year's edition marks the 20th anniversary of consistency on the part of the Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Limited in celebrating Nigerian authors. Following a call for submission in February, 163 entries were received and 11 authors were eventually longlisted. The Cora NPL Book Party is annually organized to celebrate the 11 long-listed authors. In no particular order, the 2024 long-listed books and authors include A Father's Pride by Ndidi Chiazo and Emo, Bode's Birthday Party by Conifestus Olani, Grandma and the Moon's Hidden Secret by Jimoke Verissimo, Mighty Might and Golden Jaw by Henry Akubuiro, and Risi Recycle the Dustbin Girl by Temilolua Adeshino. Others include The Children at the IDP Camp by Tubosun Taufik, The Magic Jalabia by Ayo Oyekun, The Road Does Not End by Familoni Olubumi, The Third Side of a Coin by Hygienus Ekwazi, Village Boy by Anyete Usen, and Wishmaker by Peter Umezurike. As usual, the dance troupe are here to welcome authors, organizers, and guests. Unlike previous editions of the book party, the troupe here are children, which obviously commemorates the genre of the year, children's literature. <laughs> In 2004, the NLLG inaugurated the Nigeria Prize for Literature to celebrate Nigerian authors with a grand prize of $100,000 given to the overall winner, making it the biggest in Africa. At this year's edition, some of the children present read from the long-listed books. I will roll up my sleeves to see that our school fully participates in the cultural fiesta. We are to come up with a cultural dance and other relevant cultural activities, so our school will be well represented. It was such a forceful, strange wind. The children clutched to each other tightly to resist the powerful gust of the wind. As I was helpless, they watched as bright sparkles of colored light escape from Anza's Jalabia for half a minute. When I saw Moshod, he grabbed me by the hand and dragged me to the side of the road. 
under a small tree. What happened to you yesterday? He backed. Why did you run away like that? I, I saw that man. Which man? I've called you more than 10 times. Even though she scolds me, she sounds croaky. I stare at my feet, though I feel relieved that she has been able to get up. Maybe she will still go to the market. Should I mention that I fought with Tansy? Mother will be mad. She has warned me to stop fighting. Weeks after the Max men invaded our school, normally she returned to Alanji Junior Secondary School. A team of policemen who visited our school today tried to calm things down. They addressed us. There are no public holidays on Mondays. We repeat, there are no public holidays on Mondays. After school, Adike hurries home just to hear grandma sing a praise song. Adike, my child, a child with wisdom, a child with riches, a priceless child. Adike, a child with a crown. Adike, Adike, she glows in wisdom, she glows in riches. She glows in joy. She glows like the radiant moon all over the earth. Choosing to write for children resonates with the level of passion offers her for youngsters. I believe the preteen years are the years when children actually try out those um, drugs and the rest. So the book was written to address that and then um, prevent the entry into that stage of experimentation. So Recent Recycle the Dustbin Girl is an environmental or eco-friendly book and it's also a, tech, uh, a technology conscious book that teaches children how to be custodians and ambassadors of the environment. It also teaches them to be custodians and environment of technology. I decided to do a book about village children that will be an inspiration, an aspiration for them, there are so many village children, even in the city right now, maybe as houseboys. I was a houseboy. When my kids were growing up, I needed the kind of book that they will read, and I will read and we will discuss. You see, the kind of books I found that met that criterion were foreign books, essentially. And you know the saying, if you are looking for the kind of book to read and you can't find it, then write it. We need to make children as well as adults to understand that the gospel of kindness is quite important to everybody. Organizers of the book party speak on the uniqueness of this year's edition of the Nigeria Prize for Literature. As much as the prize is 20 years this year, what makes it most exciting for us from the LLNG side, sponsors, as a company with 35 years of incorporation in, in 2024, we've been producing LNG for 25 years. It's most exciting that what represents the beginning of life? Children. So this is children's literature this year. What a better time to celebrate children's literature and to look at a new beginning or refresh the prizes. And as any as an organization, also look at ourselves and say, look, hmm, why do people like us? Uh, what we want to be seen or known for in the next maybe 25 years or 30 years. So all of this put together, year of celebration for us. If you are not actually building a book industry, if you are not begin, if you are not engaging someone at the age of six, seven, you know, I mean that's if you are if all you are doing is to assemble your 27 year old, your 55 year old selves and sitting in a room, who, who, who are you trying to develop? Participants of the book party speak on the impact the long-listed books will have on the educational system of Nigeria and lessons from the books. The stories for children this year is very significant because, of course, it explores, it makes us go back to that period and then begin to think about how life should be looked at from, a, from their perspective. Influence the Nigerian education positively. Children have more books, more options to read. The children are learning new vocabulary. They have more things to play around with as against just spending time on social media. These are quality books and we can just tell that the future is brighter with the books. All these stories coming together 
They show one theme, which is Nigeria's pride. In a few weeks, three offers will be shortlisted from the 11 offers and the winner will finally be announced at the Grand Award Night in October. Mm, suspense is high. Three will soon be announced and of the three, from the three, one will become the winner of the Nigeria Prize for Literature 2024. Stay tuned because we'll be following that story right up to the very end. This is where we have to end the show today. As always, we'll be delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.